All right, we are live. Here we are, guys. Um, if you are not interested in the whole BroFi situation, you can literally click away right now. You don't have to watch this anymore. Um, but it's basically come to my attention uh, that this video needs to be done, unfortunately. Um, and I took the last several hours basically writing out all the stuff that I want to say. Um, because I think just going off the top of my head, uh, things happened weeks and weeks ago, and I just want to lay it all out there, say exactly basically what went down from my perspective and, uh, clue you guys in a little bit on it. And so I wrote it all out. I might add a little bit to it as I go on. Um, but I, just, I wrote it cause I think this is just going to be way easier for me just to read it to you guys and, and go from there. Um, so initially I didn't want to make this video. I, I made that clear, uh, multiple times. Um, but unfortunately, um, I kind of have to at this point. Um, I was a bit naive in thinking that people would just move on when I announced Bro5 was done on YouTube. Um, and that's my bad. Um, I didn't realize until seeing, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of comments of people saying, I was here supporting you guys. I was one of the first subscribers. What is going on? Um, we want to know that I was like, dang, uh, I kind of, kind of missed the boat there. Um, I really did want to hold off on making this video or even not even making this video. I wanted to hold off on even saying bro five was over, um, until I posted all of the bro five videos. We still have about eight or nine videos that need to be edited and posted for Pinehurst. If you didn't read the description or the cat or the comments on one of the videos I explained. Um, I, ha we had this deal with Pinehurst that they were basically going to take care of us while we were at Pinehurst, um, in return for videos. And, um, you know, I have to post these videos. It's only fair to them that I post these videos. So I was hoping to say that bro five was done when all the videos were posted. Um, but unfortunately, people kind of figured it out and started seeing things and then started making assumptions. And, um, that's, that's when I kind of need to step in right now. Some of the comments have been pretty outrageous and, uh, pretty offensive as well. Um, and when people started bringing Kelsey into the equation and started, uh, accusing her of things or accusing other people, it, it got really nasty and, and that was kind of the final straw for me. Um, you don't, you don't really go there, uh, especially when you have no idea what you're talking about. And so, um, I'm making this video in hopes that, um, I don't have to talk about this anymore. I don't have to bring this up anymore. And, and really at the end of the day, I want to go back to being able to post a YouTube video and go on with my life and do whatever I need to do, whether it's film another YouTube video or hang out with Kelsey or go to the gym and not have to worry about what comments are being said on that video. I do not want to have to babysit my comment section. My comment section um, has always been pretty, pretty solid. Um, I haven't had really too many issues with it. And obviously some of the comments that are being left on this channel and some of the comments that are being left on my golf channel, um, are, are just comments that I don't want other people seeing. I mean, they're just very offensive and honestly just something that shouldn't be said in the first place, especially when you have no idea what you're talking about. So, um, I'll first start by saying that, uh, I definitely made a lot of mistakes, uh, in this whole process of making bro five happen. Um, but at the end of the day, I was always trying to do what I thought was best for bro five. This is a completely new thing for me. Um, obviously I had did some, I had, I have done some videos with Dude Perfect in the past. And so I could really see from them like how a group could work together. And I was bringing a lot of that experience into Bro5. Um, but obviously I made a lot, a lot of mistakes. And um, a lot of that obviously just goes straight on me. So I'm just gonna start from the very beginning, guys, and go straight through the timeline of what initially happened from the beginning all the way to where we are now. So it started back in December 2018. I met up with Garrett in Dallas. He hit me up basically saying that he was gonna be in Dallas, and we got together at a, a golf course and filmed two videos, 
one for his channel, one for my channel. That was my first real interaction with him in person, and I thought he was a cool dude, super chill. On January 20th, 23rd of 2019, Garrett, Zach, Andrew, Peter Finch, and many, many other golf influencers were all in Orlando for the PGA show. Um, me and Garrett and Zach and Kelsey did some mini golf videos. Me, Garrett, Zach, Andrew, and Peter did some uh, challenge videos and some fun videos on the course. This was when I actually really got to spend more time with Garrett and get to know him a little bit more um, rather than just the one time I met him when we did the collab in Dallas. Uh, fast forward all the way to July 7th to the 12th. Um, well, previous to that, I had started reaching out to Garrett and was basically saying, hey man, I, I see what's going on with your channel. This was basically when Steven and Matt joined Garrett and were basically in almost every one of Garrett's videos on his GM Golf channel. I started seeing them and I was like, dang, these kids are grinding. They're coming up with creative videos and um, their, their editing is, you know, Garrett's editing was really, really good. And so I was basically reaching out to them saying like, hey, uh, it could be cool if we all teamed up and did something together. So fa uh, fast forward to July 7th through the 12th, all they, those three guys drove over from Kansas I flew into Nashville. We all stayed at Zach's house. And the plan was basically just a bunch, a whole bunch of videos for Garrett's channel, a whole bunch of videos for Zach's channel, a whole bunch of videos for my channel, and just basically do a bunch of a bunch of collabs all around and just kind of spread um, you know, spread everyone's viewers and whatnot to everyone's channel. Um, and one of the first days we had a really, really long drive from Zach's house down to Sweetens Cove. And that was basically when like bro five was created was in that car ride. We were actually going through a bunch of different names. One of which was the sandbaggers, which, um, didn't live for very long. Uh, but it was quickly determined that bro five was going to be the name. And that's when basically bro five was born. Fast forward now to August 29th through September 2nd. Um, I flew up to Kansas City to meet up with Matt, Steven, and Garrett, and we started basically filming. This was the first time that we started filming for Bro5. We did uh, basically videos for Bro5, and then we filmed videos for my golf channel. We filmed videos for my main channel. We filmed videos for Garrett's golf channel, and the videos that we were filming for our individual channels were essentially just to push all of our subscribers, or at least the ones that were interested, to Bro5's channel. Um, and everything went really, really well. A lot of stuff got done that week. Um, I have a lot of contacts. Obviously, I've been doing social media since 2012, so I've, I've created a lot of contacts and a lot of people that can kind of help in the social media world. So I was able to get um, bro5 on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, just the, the at bro5, which is actually a lot harder than you think. Um, and then was able to also get the YouTube channel set up, verified, get everything kind of ready to go. So when we started the channel and, and started posting videos, everything was already set. This was also um, at the time too where Matt, I believe his YouTube channel and also his Instagram was job underscore equals underscore done. And um, I just basically told him, hey man, I think it'd be best if you just put your name and got your name on there. So he changed, I think his YouTube and Instagram that week to his name. And this was one of the first, I think, issues that kind of came up was um, Garrett's name on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube was GM Golf. And initially that channel was him and his friend, Micah. And then once Micah left, he basically just kept making videos. And then once Matt and Steven came on board, that's when the channel really, really took off, just really skyrocketed. And so people really thought GM Golf was Garrett, Matt, and Steven, even though GM Golf really was just Garrett. Um, and, and so that was an issue I think that I had and, um, that some of the other guys in the group also had as well was 
we can't have two groups in a group. We can't have GM Golf and Bro5 because essentially Bro5 is just GM Golf plus me. And so we can't, we, for branding purposes, we want to be able to, if we walk around or something and someone sees us, that they're like, hey, you're from Bro5, not, hey, you're from GM Golf or hey, uh, are you in GM Golf? Are you? It's, it was just confusing. So I thought to make everything easier, if we could all just get our own names for our social media and then have Bro5 and then everything basically pushed the Bro5, that was going to be the best. And that unfortunately was an issue that honestly went back and forth and obviously, as you know, never really got resolved. Um, that week was also the first week that we actually had our uh, bro five meeting, our very first bro five meeting. I think it was either at a Denny's or one of those um, places that you go super late at night to eat food. Um, and we basically just talked about the future. We talked about what we wanted. Um, we talked about just some of our goals and we all basically agreed that we wanted bro five to be our main thing. And we wanted uh, to eventually be able to only post videos on um, bro five. And Initially, this was really just me and Garrett talking because at this time, uh, Steven didn't have a YouTube channel and Matt's YouTube channel, he maybe had, you know, six or seven videos up on it. So me and Garrett basically had talked about having, continuing to post videos on our uh, golf channels or main channel and pushing Bro5. And then basically once Bro5 got more subscribers or viewers or whatever it was, once Bro5 kind of got bigger than our own individual channels, it wouldn't make sense to be pushing a bigger channel. So we were like, it'd be better just to focus everything on Bro5 and not split up the focus to making videos here, making videos there, just putting everything in one spot. Um, and this is where we also uh, all agreed on doing a split 25% for each person. Now, there was a lot of confusion because I try to explain this in the comments and people thought when I said evenly, they thought again, the whole GM golf thing is those three guys and me, they thought it was going to be 50. I was saying 50% for me, 50% for GM golf. But we all agreed that night that, or I think it was during the day that it was going to be 25% for Steven, 25% for me, 25% for Matt, 25% for Garrett, for AdSense, for merch, for brand deals, basically everything bro five. It was just going to get cut up into a quarter and each person got their little piece. Um, and one thing that I say at the beginning and something that I honestly believe about pretty much any sort of group situation is it's only going to work if, if everyone is in it together and to get everyone in it together, like everyone should be able to get a piece of the pie. If everyone is putting in the work, everyone should get the same piece. Um, and then also everyone has to have a voice. Everyone has to be able to basically say exactly what they feel. And this is where it got like kind of tricky because Steven and Garrett were like best friends. Matt kind of came into the equation a little bit later. Um, and then I was kind of like the odd man out of the situation. And so this was something that was like really important to me is like, we got to be able to have four votes. Like regardless of what your best friend says or regardless of whatever, like what I say should equal, uh, should be as important to you as your best friend or Matt or whoever. We each need to be able to say what we thought at the time, what mattered to us and not just be like, I don't really care. I'll just side with this person. So we all agree. Everything's, everything was looking good. Everything was pretty solid. We were all getting really, really stoked. Um, after that, we got back to Garrett's house and the guys approached me and they basically came up to me and said, Hey, we don't feel comfortable with the split and we think you should get 40%. We think Garrett should get 30%. Matt should get 15% and Steven should get 15%. Initially, I wasn't really super thrilled with this whole situation because I just think when you start mixing money and things aren't even, things get weird. Um, but I said, Hey, that's fine. We'll make it work. But again, the, the big thing was eventually we get to the point of where everyone's making 25%. Now it does make sense, obviously. And a couple friends and people asked me about, you know, Hey, are you, are you getting more money? What's the situation now on paper? Yes. I had more subscribers. 
I've been doing it longer, but to me, like Garrett, Matt and um, Steven's channel was crushing. I mean, it was becoming one of the biggest golf channels on YouTube and their work ethic and all that stuff. To me, it was like, it's not worth making a couple thousand or hundred dollars more in the short term. It's way better if we just evenly split it. So from the very beginning, I did not like it. I wanted to do 25% across the board, um, but it is what it is. August 15th to the 21st, we had to stream song in Innisbrook in the Tampa area. Now, initially, I had an agreement with Streamsong, with Innisbrook, and with Pinehurst that me and Kelsey were going to come out to these res resorts and they were basically going to put us up, take care of everything, and we all, all we needed to do was basically just film stuff. And, you know, this is a normal thing that a lot of social, influ uh, social media people do, social influencers or whatever you want to call them, content creators. I'm sure if you go on Instagram and you search up any of these like travel people, that's what a lot of the... A lot of the deals they do is they literally just, hey, if you pay for us to get there, you pay for our room, you pay for our food, you pay for everything, we'll blast the crap out of this. And um, that's essentially the agreement that I had with these um, resorts. Now, in my head, this is also coming off, I think, uh, an Ireland trip that I just had with Kelsey where I think she filmed uh, like nine, nine videos of me playing golf in cold, rainy weather. And I think the last thing on her mind was wanting to go and film me play more golf. So I was like, this is a great opportunity. We're trying to build content right now. We're trying to build a bank of a lot of videos for Bro5 so that when we do go live, since we live in different states, we can still post content and then meet up a couple weeks later, film more, post more content. So I was like, dude, if we can get everyone on board with this, this is gonna be fire. These resorts are crazy. The golf courses are insane. So, um, Everything looked good. They were all on board. We were gonna make it happen, and it was gonna be this epic trip uh, trip of golf, 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 film, film, film. Um, I don't remember exactly what night it was, uh, but I was in my room, and I started hearing an argument going on between Garrett and Matt, and uh, it didn't really go away, and so I was like, okay, I, I wanna come out here. If it's something that involves Bro5, I kind of want to be in the know of what's going on. Um, not trying to butt into personal problems, but at the end of the day, if we're going in business together and it's something like social media, I mean, if you have a personal issue, if, you, if there's something going on, we have to know about it. Um, we can't just be filming a video one day and you're like pissed at everyone. Uh, you're not pissed at everyone, but you're like pissed and we think we did something, but it's really something in your personal life. like. That was something that I felt like at that moment, like this was gonna be a huge part of Bro5 of, we're either gonna make it right now or we're gonna fail. And it turns out that um, it's it, it basically what ended up happening was Garrett and Steven were, weren't sure about Matt's loyalty to Bro5. They had hesitation and thought that Matt was kind of using Bro5 to get a following, to get some uh, clout as they would say, and then basically use that to go on, go off and do an acting career, something that was basically his dream and passion, um, and which would obviously be a big issue if that was the case. Now, I had been around Matt that week for a couple days, and I didn't see any signs of that. Uh, if anything, I saw the exact opposite. He was one of the first people to be on board with whatever we decided to do. He was always trying to uh, help set things up or think of new videos or whatever. Like to me, I saw Matt as uh, someone super dedicated and all about Bro5, and I backed him up. I straight up said, "Hey, I think you guys are wrong. I think Matt's all about Bro5, and um, I, I think he he hasn't shown me anything that would make him leave and go do an acting thing or uh, go do something on an individual level." Um, and, uh, <clears throat> this was a big moment too at this moment. We'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, but at Matt was sitting up on the counter and he basically said that he would give up his own individual channel for bro five. Now at the time, again, he only had seven, eight videos. He wasn't monetized, so he wasn't making any money, but still saying like, I would stop making videos for myself and give my channel away to show you guys that I'm all about Bro5. 
And one of the things that just stuck in my head over and over again is he basically was saying, all I have is bro five. I have nothing else. Bro five is it. I'm all in on bro five. And so from that, I was, I was convinced. I was like, dude, this guy is solid. Uh, we had our electric connection thing going on. Uh, me and him had some personal talks too, doing laundry that week. And I really felt like he finally opened up to me and we were making waves and, and getting closer where I didn't really feel like I was this odd man out uh, in bro five. Um, funny story real, t real quick about uh, arguments too between guys because pretty much like the next day, everyone was cool and there was no issue and we just went straight back to filming. I just want to do a quick little antidote of a, a story. So me and one of my good friends, my roommate in college, we actually got in a fight because we were doing, he was big into eating contests and we were doing a Taco Bell eating contest. And I think he had eaten like uh, eight, sorry, he uh, had ate like 10 tacos already and basically was like, I'm done. There was one taco left and he would refuse to eat it. So one of our friends, Taylor, gave me the taco and said, hey, when you get back to your, your room, just put it under his bed so he can like smell it. I did that, terrible idea. He got super pissed at me. Uh, you know, fast forward, what, 10 years or something, maybe a little bit more, a little less, and he's the best man at my wedding. So uh, when it comes to arguments and stuff, I really wasn't too concerned. And that night, I really felt like we actually got way closer um, because things were said, we were talking about, we gotta make this a family, we gotta make this like all about each other. Uh, so that way we can continue to grow this thing and be successful, basically. Um, at this moment, we basically went straight over to Jupiter, Florida, which is like the mecca of golf. All these guys live, all these professional golfers live over there. Um, and I had reached out to Matt Wolf. Uh, if you don't know who Matt Wolf is, Matt Wolf is, you can Google him, but he's like one of the biggest rising stars on the PGA Tour. He's He's got that crazy... Uh, swing and I'd reached out to him and he was all about filming with us and I was like holy cow this is insane like we're gonna film a wheel of not ideal with Matt, Matt Wolf it's gonna be insane um, unfortunately later that day he had talked to his team you know his managers his agents his agents all those people his PR people and uh, they basically kind of told him hey I don't think you should do this and honestly I don't blame him you know, I, I think it was probably the right decision. It was the, well, it was the safe decision because at that time, Bro5, we didn't have a YouTube channel. Like we weren't posting videos yet. So his whole management team, when you went to like, wait, where you're doing your filming with Bro5, what's that? They couldn't see anything. And so, you know, he's got tons of sponsors and stuff. The last thing he wants to do is get into a video and something be said or something be done. And then all of a sudden he loses sponsorship. So. No hard feelings there, but at the end of the day, like the story is if, if we weren't going to do it with bro five, it wasn't going to happen, right? Like I wasn't like, Oh, sorry guys, screw you. I'm going to go and film on my main channel, which he can see that I've done videos with John Rom, Brooks Kepka, uh, Austin cook. I've gone to Beth page. I've done all these things. They would have been like, Oh yeah, you can do a video with Brody. No problem. But Again, it was the whole mentality of like, we gotta be all in on bro five. We cannot put the individual first. It's not gonna work. Um, fast forward, so that was August 24th. A couple of days later, August 26th is when we filmed with Greg Norman. Now, this was insane. Like, absolutely insane. Dream come true. Um, and initially, when I reached out to his team, they basically wanted Greg to do a video on my main channel. And I was like, absolutely, let's do it. Now, once we got Bro5 involved in the Innisbrook stream song situation, I immediately reached back out to them and said, hey, are we able to do a Bro5 video? And they said, for sure. Which I was like, holy cow, Greg Norman's like one of the busiest people in the world. If you don't know anything about him, literally do a quick little research on him because he owns so many businesses, runs so many golf courses, designs so many golf courses. And so the fact that they okayed him to be there to do two videos I was like, holy cow, this is, this is huge. This is big for us. Um, and so there was a lot of people initially commenting on that video that I posted with Greg on my main channel being like, this should be on Bro5. Why is it on this channel? And I agree. Like I wanted everything down the road, not at that moment, but I eventually wanted everything just to be posted on Bro5 because it got to the point where honestly, 
videos did better on Bro5, and also uh, we weren't really bringing in that many subscribers from my main channel, Golf Channel, for Garrett's channel over. And so it's like, why post on there? Let's just post on Bro5 where every everyone gets a piece of it. But the reason why we didn't do it here is because you don't post on my main channel, we don't even get a Bro5 video. And I think everyone in the group was completely fine with that, so there was no issue. Um, so let's see here, let's see here. Okay, so one of the things that kind of came up, another kind of like small red flag and I, something that, you know, I think we can all relate to. It's kind of like when you date that girl where she's really, really attractive, but like she has a red flag and you kind of just like, oh, who cares about that? She's really hot. And then another red, red flag comes up and you're like, oh, no, nah, dude, she's super hot. I'm gonna just continue to date her. Eventually it just blows up in your face. Um, you'll kind of see that's what ended up happening here. So one of the first issues is the night before we all sat down, we had a meeting and I, we basically all went through how tomorrow was going to go, what we were filming, what we were doing, basically prepping for the shoot with Greg Norman tomorrow, because again, super busy dude, we have to film two videos and he only has a certain amount of hours. Like he literally shows up at 10 o'clock and he's leaving at one. And that's it. If like the video is not complete and it's 1259, the video is not getting done. Like he's leaving and we have to finish it ourselves. So um, I was like, we need to all be on the same page. When we got to the venue, when we got to his uh, course that he opened up basically for us to film at, we were trying to get everything set up before he showed up. We got there early, trying to get the, everything set up. I met with Greg's uh, basically assistant manager, pe person that basically runs his life essentially. And I was like, we're good. We got everything done. Da, 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 da. And I quickly was just like, hey, Garrett, go out and scout some shots. Basically what we talked about, you know, scouting some shots so that we had in mind, you know, where we wanted to go in the video to do the next shot. So we're not just on camera being like, oh, where do we go next? And move quick. And he kind of just looked at me and, and kind of was like, wait, what am I doing? What's going on? Not that big of a deal. I get it. But in front of his management team and stuff, it's just not the greatest look to where it makes us look unprofessional or not knowing what we're doing. And that was just something that, you know, I talked with Steven, talked with Matt, talked to Garrett, talked with everyone about. It. I was like, hey, when we do things with certain people, you know, these people are friends with other people and stuff. We just want to make sure we're on board. So I know some of you might be like, oh, that's not a huge deal. It was unfortunately an, an, a, an occurrence of where things would be said that were very, very important. And it would kind of just go in one year, out the other. People would be on their cell phone being like, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. And then when it came to it, they would be like, what are we doing? And unfortunately, that was kind of like one of the red flags as some of the other red flags I mentioned earlier. Um, August 28th to September 2nd, we now are going up to Pinehurst. Literally probably one of the coolest resorts. Uh, if I want to do a quick little plug for them, why not? One of the coolest, coolest little resorts you can go to, guys. They have nine golf courses. They have a par three course. They have like an 18 hole putting green that you can do crazy stuff on. It's absolutely insane. Um, and so we got the opportunity of going up there and basically just having free reign. Um, now, before we went, we talked about how Steven and Garrett didn't like filming course vlogs. Now, this was a huge thing too, something that I didn't know at the time. And again, one of my faults, I think, was sometimes I just pushed the, the, the envelope and was like, guys, let's do this, let's do this. And maybe the way I said it was just overbearing or whatever, and they, they didn't feel like they could, you know, come up and say like, hey, I don't wanna do that or whatnot, and that was one of my flaws from the get-go, get was just assuming certain things and pushing certain things and, and maybe not allowing everyone to actually say what was on their mind. Um, so it took a little bit of time, but Steven and Garrett finally kind of came up and said, Hey, like stream song, we just did a bunch of course vlogs. We don't like filming course vlogs. Um, cause initially Pinehurst, we were going to film a course vlog at one, two, three, four, like literally film all nine courses in the matter of like five or six days. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool. Let's figure it out. Which ones do we want to do? So we like picked two, four and eight, I think were the three that we picked that we wanted to film at. Um, and then we were gonna do some fun challenges that you guys have probably already seen on the par three course, and then some fun challenges on the putting green, which you guys haven't seen yet. Um, but I thought that was like a step in the right direction because that was really the first time someone 
came back and was like, no, I don't want to do what you're saying. Um, and I was like, okay, good. This is what we need. Like you guys need to tell me more like what, what I'm doing wrong or whatnot. Cause this is new and I'm just trying my best. Um, so yeah, communication is starting to get better. All things good. Um, and yeah, I could definitely see myself take the leadership role. Uh, not something that I want to do necessarily, but unfortunately there's like, there was just too many things that would go on and it wouldn't get done. Um, and it, it, it was definitely something that, you know, they might say that, uh, I did everything and didn't let them say anything or whatever. But at the end of the day, like stuff wasn't getting done. And when things were trying to get done, like we tried to do an Airbnb, we tried to like, we ended up doing, um, a hotel and went to the hotel and the hotel was trash. And so we left the hotel and did an Airbnb. And then I was left with the bill at the hotel and I had to do all this stuff to try to get that reimbursed. And that was all done because someone else did the, um, did the booking. And it was one of those things where every, it was kind of not said, but it was kind of said like, Brody, you, you've done this way more. Just do it. You know how to do it. Just do it. And so I was fine with doing extra stuff. I was fine with doing the logistics and stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe now looking back at it, uh, you know, did that kind of screw me in the end? It might have. It, it really did might have. Um, so then after that, September 3rd through the 7th, this was literally an epic trip. I'm telling you, we just went, we just went, went, went. We went back to Dallas here. All the guys stayed in the house um, and we filmed here in Dallas. That's where we filmed the evolution of trick shots. Um, I think that actually might have been the only video. <clears throat> the only video we might have filmed while we were here. I know we did TikToks and some Instagram stuff and like other things like that. Um, but that might have been the only video we filmed here. But that was like the big, big video that I thought I was going to post on my main channel. That was going to be the video I posted on my main channel. We were going to post the all sports trick shot on uh, the Bro 5. And then we were going to, I can't remember what the, the video we were going to post on Garrett's channel. But we were all going to post on the same day and we were all going to push the Bro 5. And I thought that was going to be the big video there. Um, while we were actually in town here in Dallas, I got a call from my agent saying that, hey, FanDuel wants to do a brand deal with you. They want to pay you X amount of dollars. And I said, great. I said, is there a way of us being able to do it as Bro 5? And they said, no, they, they want it to be, uh, they definitely want it to go on your Instagram. And I said, okay, can we figure something out here? So what ended up happening was, let's just say $10 was going to go to me from FanDuel, right? My agent was able to go there who was kind of pseudo working for Bro5 at the time. We hadn't signed any contracts or whatnot, but she was trying to set deals up for Bro5 and obviously things like this she was taking care of. And so she was able to go back to FanDuel and say, hey, let's get these guys involved. And they agreed. So that $10 was split um, where I think I got seven. Uh, Garrett got, or no, I got like six. Garrett got three. And Matt and Steven both got like 0.5. Um, and that was kind of just based off of Instagram followers. But everyone was cool about it. It was actually a really, really fun moment at the time because Matt and Steven we're literally in my backyard doing Instagram story for the very first time, their first brand deal. And so we all had fun because I remember my first time doing a brand deal. It took me like an hour. I kept messing up. I kept getting nervous. And me and Gary were kind of, you know, poking fun and having fun with everyone being like, this was the first one, hopefully of many. Um, so that happened there. And, and that kind of goes back to the whole idea of like, it's gotta be bro five or we can't do it. September 9th channel launches. Epic all sports battle. At this point, we have almost 100,000 subscribers or something crazy like that already. Um, or maybe it was 70,000. I don't remember exactly. No, it wasn't 100,000. Yeah, it was, it was up there. 50, 60, I don't know. Um, and everything was going good. It was going good. The channel, everything. Everyone was pushing it. Everything, everyone was loving it. Um, and like you guys were saying, like we were hyping it up so much. We were teasing it on Instagram, teasing it on our YouTube community pages. We were teasing it all over and it finally was time and everyone was stoked um, and everything was going great. Um, September 11th, because uh, we were posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday. September 9th was a Monday. September 11th was a Wednesday. Um, Garrett 
had to post that video because I was on a flight. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know at all about Bro5 is me and Garrett never edited, never edited? We never did an edit for any of the Bro5 videos. Uh, we found these guys, a couple of them, uh, and had a couple editors, and basically they were constantly doing edits, and we were initially kind of all watching it as a group, and basically, telling these guys, and honestly, Garrett was really, really good at this, at talking to the editors to get them to edit in a style that we all wanted. Um, and so, literally in no time at all, these guys were editing freaking fire posts for us, and we were basically just, as a group, watching them, proof watching them, and then being like, yep, everything's good, post. So September 11th was, Garrett kind of was the one that you know, the video was up there, he added the description, he did the tags, the monetization, the end cards, all that stuff, the title, thumbnail, all that he did and posted it. Um, and uh, I forgot, sorry, let me go backwards a little bit. In Innisbrook, we were, oh no, Pinehurst, excuse me, Pinehurst, we basically sat down in the lobby and all four of us sat down and we basically were like, hey listen, I, well, I started the meeting and I was like, we need to talk about some stuff. And I was like, I think we need to break up things so everyone is doing something, right? Um, initially, we thought me and Garrett were going to do a lot of the heavy editing and we thought that was going to take up a lot of the, our time. But now that we're not editing, we have more time to do things. And so I was like, let's split up things um, so everyone kind of can take over something and that will just kind of go good. And essentially this is what Dude Perfect does. This is something that I took straight from them because they're super successful and this is something that just makes sense, right? You have someone to take care of this. So we sat down there and we were just like, what is everyone interested in? What, is, what do people wanna do? Um, yada, yada, yada. So at the end of the day, what, what we came up with was Steven was gonna take care of TikTok. He was gonna run the Bro5 TikTok and once merch was, start, was gonna get going, he was gonna do merch. Now, he's never done anything like that, so I obviously was gonna help, and Garrett was gonna help basically uh, the first you know, transition to where he feels comfortable, and then he was gonna take over, and he's got merch and TikTok. Matt was gonna do Facebook, and Matt was gonna help me out with Twitter. Those were the two things Matt was gonna do. Um, and then Garrett was gonna do YouTube community, like the post, the YouTube community posts, and he was also going to help with YouTube and also start uh, building out the um, channel memberships because we wanted to kind of start making some content off, uh, like not just on the main channel that, you know, for the die, die hard fans. And he was like, I'm gonna be good at that. So I was like, all right, great. And then I was basically gonna do, uh, and he was also gonna help me with the editors and YouTube and setting stuff like that. So I was gonna do the YouTube, I was gonna do Twitter, I was gonna do Instagram, uh, the emails, working with brands, setting up collabs, all that stuff that I've been doing for years and years and had a lot of experience. So at the end of the day, we all agreed and we were all good and we were like, sweet, everyone's gonna crush it, awesome, let's do it. Um, and so after September 11th, at some point in between September 11th and September 19th, I'm not sure exactly, but this is when we were basically, uh, everyone was there in Kansas City, I was in Dallas and we were basically trying to come up with uh, the contract for everyone to sign. We were basically trying to set up an LLC for Bro5 and then we also were trying to set up an, a contract with the agency that I work with that they would basically represent not just me now, but they would represent Matt, they would represent Steven, they would represent Garrett and they would represent Bro5. Um, and so we were kind of having a lot of lawyers involved. My lawyer was involved in it. Matt, I think Matt had his own lawyer or Matt and Garrett had the same lawyer and then Steven had his own lawyer and everyone was kind of looking at it and the big issues that were kind of um, up in the air, or not up in the air, but the big issues were Garrett and Matt wanted to still be able to sell their individual merch um, and keep all the profits, right? So if they came up with a design, for example, like, um, what's the line I said? There's a little gap there, right? There's a little gap there. Uh, if I wanted to put that on a shirt, for example, because I said it, because I came up with it and put it on the shirt, I, I'm gonna get all the money. Now, you can see how that could be an issue, um, but I get it. That's, that's 
That's fine. We, we're, well, let's work it out. Let's figure it out. And the other thing is they wanted to also be able to uh, do sponsorships by themselves. So if someone reached out to them and wanted to pay them $5,000 to do a YouTube video, they wanted to be able to do that and not have Bro5 involved. If um, someone reached out to them and said, hey, post something on your Instagram story and we'll send you this product or uh, whatever, any, any sort of brand deals, any sort of trades, any sponsorships, anything like that, they wanted that to be separate if it came to them individually uh, from Bro5. Again, something that obviously is gonna be an issue. Um, and I'll bring that up here in a second. More, we'll go more into that in a second. Um, at this point, me and Steven kind of started to see um, that Bro5 was not as consistent in their posts. They weren't really posting about Bro5 anymore. Um, they were pretty much just posting about their own individual channels, their own individual merch, um, and they were just basically pushing stuff that was going to benefit their own individual self and not Bro5 um, to the point of where they also even just stopped uh, posting stuff on their Instagram story when Bro5 um, posted a new video, um, which is something that, you know, you literally just, Bro5, new video, swipe up. Once that started not happening anymore, me and Steven kind of got worried a little bit. Um, the other thing is that they wanted to post on their free time and uh, on their own individual channels. They wanted to keep posting uh, on their free time. And they kept telling us it's not about the money, it's not about the money. Now at this time, Matt was monetized and was making money. And so this was something that me and Steven were kind of like, I don't know what's going on here. And this is when me and Steven really started all of a sudden to create a lot of dialogue together. We really didn't talk that much prior to this. Um, if you go back to a lot of the videos, this is something that we kind of talked about too. If you go back to a lot of the videos, it was me and Matt, Electric Connection, or me and Garrett, Electric Twigs. Me and Steven uh, really never were on the same team together. And honestly, we really never even had that much time individually to talk to one another. Uh, it was either all four of us together or we weren't, uh, me and Steven weren't together. So. This is the first time that me and him really kind of started to text and honestly had a lot of texts and a lot of phone conversations um, between him and me uh, talking about the issues that we had. Because at the time right now, Steven literally only had Bro5. He didn't have his own individual channel. I had my own individual channel and those guys did, but he didn't. So in his head, the only way he's making money and paying bills and, and taking care of himself is if Bro5 does stuff. And so when he started seeing that not everyone was all about Bro5, it, it, it got an issue with him and obviously an issue with me because if you go back and look at my channels, I really put both my channels on the back burner. I wasn't really posting anything on my golf channel. I wasn't really posting anything on my main channel. I was spending all my time on Bro5, pushing Bro5 and trying to do things that were gonna grow Bro5. And so that was starting to get me pretty much upset as well. Um, so I think that day or that night, September 18th, we had a phone conversation and it did not go well. Um, it didn't go well at all. Things were said, uh, a lot of things that Matt and Garrett said, I just straight up called them out on their BS. And I was like, what you guys are telling me is a bunch of crap. I don't believe it. You're saying something and I'm seeing something completely different now. Was I pretty aggressive? Yeah, I was pretty pissed off, honestly. Um, and should I have handled it differently? Probably, 100% probably should have handled it differently. And so at that time, I, I was like, I don't think a phone call is gonna be good because what ended up happening was there was just no conversation. Like, nothing was being said. Everyone just got quiet and no one was saying anything. Um, and so I was like, we need to talk in person. So I bought a flight that day or that night to fly out the next morning to get up to Kansas City to meet with everyone and have something in person. Now, that night, me and Steven talked for a couple hours about everything we wanted to say. We didn't want to come in to the conversation that we had um, and just like start spitting stuff out and whatever. That was, we saw how that backfired and that was my bad. So we sat down and we literally just thought of everything that 
was coming up that we were like, we don't like what's going on. And we were like, let's get facts. Let's take screenshots. Let's look at numbers. Let's bring stuff to the table to say, instead of just like, hey, this is what we're feeling is going on, showing them exactly what is actually going on. So flew up there, Kansas City. I don't know if you guys are still with me, but if you're still with me, we're going, man. You can make a movie out of this or a book. I don't know. It, it gets crazier though, so stay with me. We, we, we write everything down. It's all in a notepad. And we, got, we, we basically go up there, bust out our phone. We sit at a Starbucks outside. I think we get there at 10 o'clock. We don't leave until like 2 or 3. We might have got there even at 9. We were there for 3 or 4 hours talking. Now, um, this is basically kind of some of the things that me and Steven, I'm not going to bring up all the other stuff because there were some other things that honestly you guys don't need to know. Um, but these are like the main things that really irked me and Steven. So uh, we were like, the first question was like, where is everyone's main focus? Right now, Steven's main focus, he's, he's posting two times or three times a day on TikTok. He's commenting on the Bro5 text messages and he's all in on Bro5. That's basically all he can do right now because the merchandise, we're working with this company, we're trying to get it set up and then he's gonna start rolling. Um, obviously on my side, I'm posting all the YouTube videos. No one helped me doing the posts on the YouTube videos. Um, I'm doing all the Instagram. I'm doing, I'm doing all the stuff, emails. I'm doing all that stuff, okay? So I'm doing all bro five. Steven's doing all bro five. We are like, what are you guys doing? And so uh, we went back 10 days to September 9th um, to Facebook, bro five's Facebook. And I went through and I looked to see how many times We've made posts on Facebook because Matt was supposed to run the Facebook and basically he was supposed to post two or three times a day because that's like Facebook best practices. Whether it's like a funny meme of us, a funny meme that he found on the internet, one of our trick shots, whatever, just post three times a day. He, he had made five posts since September 9th. So 10 days, he made five posts. We were looking for 30, 20 or 30 posts. Three of the posts that he made didn't even have a caption. So me and Steven are looking at that, like, what's going on? Matt didn't make a single tweet in all those days. Um, Garrett hadn't done anything on Instagram, the feed. He didn't do any stories. Um, and he hadn't done anything with channel memberships. Um, or at least that, to my knowledge, like nothing was said. And then he said, yeah, I haven't done anything. So this was like me and Steven's first thing being like, what is going on guys? Like, I get it when we're all in one place, we're filming, that's great, everyone's doing stuff, but like no, like all of a sudden no one's pulling their weight. What's going on? Um, also, we brought up Matt at Innisbrook. We said, Matt, at Innisbrook, you said you'd give up your channel for Bro5, but now the only thing that we see that's different between now and then is you're actually making money on your individual channel. Um, and now you don't want to give up your individual channel. Now you're telling us that you want to still be able to post in your free time. And the big thing too is like, it was never, to me and Steven, it was never about them posting videos on their individual channels. It was always about the fact that they're doing a bunch of stuff for their individual channels and they're not even able to make a tweet or an Instagram post or a Facebook post. That was our issue is, if they were able to do their own stuff, like the job that they were supposed to do, if they want to do anything other than that, that's great. Now, one thing we all agreed on was, I don't think it's a good idea to have like three people in a video. Like it wouldn't be smart for me to have a video on my channel with me, Matt and Steven, or a um, video on my channel with me, Garrett and Matt. Um, so we were saying like, if you want to go out and make a video by yourself and whatever, that's fine. But the issue was nothing was getting done that was promised to the group. And this was something that I actually ended up doing a lot of research on prior to, too. I forgot to say this, but I looked into the sidemen. Now, the difference between like the sidemen and Dude Perfect is Dude Perfect is all Dude Perfect, right? They don't have individual channels. They have individual Instagrams and individual Twitters, but everything they post is either like personal stuff, like here's my wife, here's my family, here's my hunting trip, or Dude Perfect. That's it. They don't push anything other than that. Um, now the sidemen, how they go is they all have their own individual stuff, their own individual merch, their own individual videos, brand deals, all that stuff. 
But when they come to Sidemen, it's all Sidemen merch. It's all Sidemen. It's all about Sidemen. And one thing I uh, love him or hate him, one thing that I heard from KSI in an interview was when he was on a podcast, they asked him, like, what happens when someone in Sidemen, like, isn't doing their job? And he basically said, we just all call him out on it. Like, everyone in the group's like, bro, what are you doing? You said you're doing this. Do it. Um, and that's what I thought we were doing here. I thought me and Steven were literally just being like, you guys aren't doing crap. Literally, you haven't done crap. Let's get going. Um, unfortunately, it's going to blow up in our faces, basically. Um, so, yeah. So, we were basically like, Matt, what the heck? You said you were all about Bro5. You're going to give up your channel. The only difference now is you're making money. Um, and so, at that point, at that point, we were like, Hey, if it's not about the money, because Garrett and Matt both kept saying, it's not about the money. We don't care about the, the AdSense that we're making from our individual videos that are going into our pockets. Me and Steven were like, because we talked about this before, we were like, okay, great. We'll make a second channel on Bro5. It'll be like Bro5 2 or whatever it is. And you guys can post whatever you want. You can make videos of you playing golf. You can make videos of you basket weaving. You can do whatever you want. Post it on this channel and we'll all split the revenue 25%. So that way, we all feel like if you are going to do something by yourself, at least we're all benefiting from it. And, and since you don't care about the money and all you're telling us is that you love making videos and it's not about the money, this is a perfect way that all of us are going to be happy. Well, they didn't like that idea. So they said no. Um, so uh, then we kind of went into the whole individual channels kind of brought up some things that we had talked about way in the past about what the individual channels were going to be all about, right? Because that was a big thing. We want to post our individual channels. Great. So what we had talked about previously in a meeting was our individual channels, the main goal of a video was to push Bro5. If we were going to do something, let's push Bro5 at the end of the video. Let's push Bro5 in the end card. We talked about having a subscribe to Bro5 above the fold, in the description, right? You, instead of like having to click and then see like 10 layers down, subscribe to Bro5. Like the first thing should be like subscribe, not first thing, but like above the fold, subscribe to Bro5. Um, and and, uh, and and at this point too, we had also seen that like when we're pushing Bro5 and whatnot, it's not doing that much stuff, which was also one of the reasons why we were like, guys, let's just all focus on Bro5 because that was also another thing that we agreed on is once our individual channels weren't really helping Bro5 grow. Let's just focus on Bro5. Um, and if you go, well, we took screenshots. I don't know what the situation is now. They probably are way different though. But we took screenshots and showed them that on their videos, there was no Bro5 above the fold. Uh, there was nothing at the end of the video about Bro5. Everything was merch, right? First line, buy my merch. At the end of the video, here's a link, buy my merch. Merch, merch, merch. Nothing about Bro5. And me and Steven were like, bro, we don't really feel like this is, this is a fair shake. We're not feeling it. I'm going to start going quick here. Um, so we kept asking him, why do you guys want to post on your own channel? Seriously, why do you want to post on your own channel? Because, uh, you know, if it's, not, if it's not about money, then do this. You're saying no to that. What's the deal? Uh, and at this point, they didn't really have an answer. And so I was like, okay, try to think, you know, think on it the rest of the day or the week or whatever and get back to us. Let us know so we can figure out a solution right now because what, what's going on right now is not working. Um, uh, then there was like other things where like Matt didn't promote a Bro5, like a new Bro5 video um, on Instagram when we posted it. Uh, but then I posted a video on Instagram of him doing a trick shot and he commented on that video so it was like, he was on Instagram when we posted a new Bro5 video, didn't do anything about that, but when there was a post about him, we all know if you make a comment in a video and it's a top comment, there's a little hair here, and it's a top comment, you're gonna get a lot of people clicking on your profile, you're gonna get more followers. That's why people, for the most part, even comment on people's, um, people's posts because they're trying to get more followers. And so when that happened, I was like, bro, what the heck is going on, man? Um, and then, you know, if you go to Matt's link, uh, again, this is back in the day. I don't know what it is now. If you go to Matt's link on Instagram, it was a video of him trying to get into the challenger games for Logan Paul's thing. If you go to Garrett's link, it was his mer individual merchandise. 
Um, again, two things that me and Steven were like, dude, we're, we're posting links to the new bro five video and you guys are doing stuff that's not going to help us. I know it's not big guys, but all this stuff adds up and it was just things that me and Steven were just not cool with. Um, and so obviously, well, not obviously, if you are confused, this is why the individual merch thing won't work. If all you're trying to do is push your own individual merch, if we do a YouTube video and you show up in your own individual merch, everyone's gonna show up in their own individual merch. And then someone made a good comment about it on one of the YouTube videos about the merch. If it was individual and people just wanted to push their own stuff, you're gonna begin screen time, cop the merch, yada, yada, yada. It's just not good for everyone. It's way better if I'm wearing one of Matt's sayings and, and Garrett's wearing one of my sayings and we're wearing electric connection shirts and we're doing all, and everyone's benefiting it. It gets really, really weird when all four of us are like, oh, I gotta put my new merch shirt on to really push it this video and it gets work. It just doesn't work. And then the other thing is if we're going through this whole merch company, you're gonna tell Steven to do something like, hey dude, like make this shirt, make this happen, but Steven's not making any money from doing it? Doesn't make sense. Um, the individual sponsorships, brand deals, social swaps, whatever you wanna call, the reason why that doesn't work, simply the, the easiest reason, let's say Under Armour reached out to Garrett and was like, hey Garrett, we wanna pay you $10,000 to do a YouTube video. And he's like, yes, I'm on board. Well, what if Nike's trying to do a $100,000 deal with Bro5? Right? The agents in works, it's, it's, it's about to happen, and then all of a sudden Garrett posts a video on his channel with Under Armour. Is Nike gonna pull out? They probably will, it probably won't work. Also, the other thing that won't work with that is Steven doesn't have a YouTube channel. Steven is only pushing himself, right? And also, if you're interested in doing your own individual sponsorships and stuff like that, it's really important to get a lot of subscribers for your individual channel, to get a lot of followers for your individual Instagram because you make more money. Again, it goes back to pushing your own individual self versus the group. So doing stuff like that just won't work legally from a legal side. It's super messy. You can talk to any lawyer or any agent about it. It's just not gonna be clean. It's not gonna be pretty. It would be very difficult at the end of the day and it would lead to a lot of issues. It would lead to a lot of issues because think about it. Think about if someone got really, really popular. Like think about One Direction, right? If one of those guys in One Direction went off and tried to do a solo act, I don't know, they might have gotten popular, but maybe not. And so if they, if one guy got popular while the whole group was getting popular, and then he kind of was doing side deals at the end of the day because of the whole situation, it's just gonna cause issues. If Steven and me are sitting over here not doing only any individual brand deals, and Garrett or Matt are doing 100,000, 20,000, whatever, and we're sitting over here being like, wait, we, we make all these videos and we're just a part of it, what's going, it just is icky and doesn't work. Um, at, the end of the, at the end of the meeting though, it actually went pretty well. Both the guys agreed, selling individual merch, not a good idea, everyone's gonna split everything 25%. That's my dark horse Frisbees, that's, uh, Garrett's GM golf stuff or Matt's pan things or Steven's quesadilla. Everyone's gonna split everything 25%. They also agreed that the sponsorship thing wasn't gonna work as well. So we all agreed on that and we were all like on board and we were moving forward. Um, the only big issue at hand was they wanted to post on their individual channels. And again, at the end of the day, me and Steven really didn't care. The only thing is we didn't trust that they could post on their individual channels and still do stuff for Bro5. Um, and so that was like the big thing that we were worried about. Um, and, and leaving that meeting, it seemed like Matt really was like, crap, dude, I haven't really been do pulling my weight. I need to get better. It seemed like Garrett was like, yeah, dude, I need to start doing more stuff too. And we were all back together. We finally got the group, the chemistry, everything was working. We went and got Subway and I went off to the airport and flew back home and uh, had a phone call that night. And uh, phone call wasn't good. Um, Steven basically uh, described it best in a text message by saying, uh, Garrett, I don't know who talked to Garrett, but Garrett is doing a complete 180. Um, everything that we basically agreed and came to terms with and talked about like moving forward with, all of a sudden was out the window. Um, 
The phone call initially started with me, Garrett, Matt, and Steven. That's the only people I thought that were on the phone call. Uh, about five minutes or so into the phone call after, um, and, and you guys know Steven, he's a quiet guy. Uh, he doesn't really say much, but when he does say something, you ought to listen because he means it. Um, so he was kind of sitting back and he's also in a really weird position because like him and Garrett are best friends. So like, that's a weird dynamic when like all he has is bro five and like weird stuff is happening where bro five is like looking like it's not going to end up going on. But like his best friend is like kind of in the mud, stirring it up. So he was kind of in a weird spot. Five minutes into the conversation, Garrett's parents get on the phone call. Things got weird. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say much about the phone call conversation. Honestly, I tried to completely wipe that out of my memory because it was like a solid hour of just, I don't know what was said. Um, but I mean, they initially came on and just accused me of a bunch of stuff. And then I basically was like, yo, this is actually what's going down. And, and then from there, it just got really, really weird. And um, yeah, we, me and Steven were texting while they were talking to us, being like, can we talk to Matt and Steven I, or Matt and Garrett? I don't know why parents are involved. The group is me, Steven, Matt, and Garrett. That's it. There's four people. No one else. Kelsey doesn't have a say in Bro 5. Steven's sister doesn't have a say in Bro 5. It's us four. That's what we said from the very beginning. So that got really weird. Um, and obviously another red flag in the situation is having a dark horse situation like that. Do you want to continue to go down that route? Um, so that was all September 19th. The meeting, the four hour meeting in Kansas City and then the crazy phone call that night. The next day, September 20, at this point, I really don't know what is true for my conversations with Steven. Um, at the time I thought everything he was saying to me was hundred percent facts and I took him at his word. I had no reason not to going back and looking at him again today and writing all these things from our text messages. I don't know what was true. What was said to manipulate me? What was said for whatever purpose? I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to kind of lay it out for you and you guys can kind of decide for yourselves. Uh, we texted for the next several days and it was like a, a an absolute roller coaster. Um, like at one minute, everyone was on board. Steven was texting me, Garrett's in, Matt's in, everyone's on board. Um, and then the next minute he's like, no, they're out. And then the next minute, no, we're back on. And so at that moment I was still doing the thing. Like you, none of you guys knew bro five was having any issues. YouTube videos were still being posted. Editors were getting sent the videos. They were, they were uploading them. I was, uh, posting them. I was posting stuff on Instagram. We were tweeting stuff. Uh, Steven was still posting stuff on TikTok. No one knew Bro5 had any issues on like September 20th, but we had serious issues going on. Um, later that day, September 20th, Steven tells me that him and Garrett are ready to fly to Dallas to sign the contract with the, the, the agency um, that's going to represent Bro5. Uh, a few texts later, he says that him, Garrett, and Matt now are all planning to come down to Dallas and rent an Airbnb and sign the, 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 the agency thing. Which basically just, the only thing the agency thing says is basically at the end of the day, anything that Bro5 does, 10% goes to the agent. And that's standard. If you talk to any agency, they take 10%, right? So that's the only thing it said. If someone wanted to come work with us, we send it to the agency, they handle all the stuff, the emails, back and forth, phone calls, meetings, all that stuff. They come back to us. You guys need to make a video. This is what you need to say. This is what you need to do. We do it. They send us a check. They keep 10%. That's all it said. But it was the first step. It was, it was a big first step because at first, no one wanted to sign it. Now people are signing it. We still had the LLC, which had all the percentage breakdowns and all that stuff. But I thought this was a step in the right direction. Uh, text later that night from Steven, he was saying, Hey, I'm going to call you tomorrow about Dallas. And I was like, great, sweet. Talk to you tomorrow. September 21st, next day, text from Steven that Matt Garrett and himself are calling me that night. I was like, awesome. Great. Later that night, text from him saying, Hey, let's push it to tomorrow. No problem. I'm free. Let's talk tomorrow. September 22nd, Matt calls me individually, uh, in the afternoon or so. Tells me he heard what he needed to hear in the meeting and 
basically what he said, what, or what I said in the meeting, and this was from the four hours, this was the one thing that basically stuck to him. And the one thing that he couldn't get over is I basically looked at everyone. And I said, Hey, everyone sitting here is replaceable, right? Um, can we find someone else? to do, to post on Facebook? Can we find someone else to post on Twitter? Yes. Can we find someone else to do channel memberships? Yes. Can we find someone else to do emails? Can we find someone else to post YouTube videos? Yes. Can we find someone else to post on TikTok? Yes. We're all replaceable. We can pick someone else and drop you in their spot and bro five would move on without you. Three people and some rando person and it would still work. Now, the other thing I said though is I don't want that to happen. We have something good here. We have some chemistry. We have electric connection, we have team twigs, we have good thing working. I don't want that to happen. But at the end of the day, that should be in the back of your head to, to motivate you to continue to push forward and not to get yourself this big idea of, I can do this, uh, whatever it may be. But that was the one thing that really stuck with him and maybe I should have cho chose different words maybe at the time. Um, but he basically, he basically called me talked for about 15, 20 seconds, said, uh, I need, I heard all I needed is here. You said I was replaceable um, and I'm out. Hung up the phone. Uh, I immediately called back, uh, didn't answer. Texted him three, four times, I think in a row. Um, he read them, didn't respond. And at that moment, I was extremely confused as to what the heck was going on. Um, because I thought they were all coming down I thought I was gonna get a phone call that they're all gonna come down to the Airbnb and we're gonna sign this thing. Um, so, are we still rolling? Oh, we are, sorry, low power. Okay, I gotta hurry up, we got low power here. Here we go, let's go, Brody. Keep this under an hour and a half. God, this is a movie. We're keeping it under an hour and a half. Okay, so, uh, Steven texts me though and says, hey, um, I don't know what's going on with the math situation, that's really weird, but Garrett still says he can make everything happen. So I'm like, okay. And as you can see, I only have communication with Matt or Steven. I don't have communication with Matt. I don't have communication with Garrett. Everything I'm getting through is from Steven. Next day, September 23rd, Matt and Garrett are filming videos together, which adds to the confusion. I don't know why Garrett would film a video with Matt if Matt literally just broke up bro five. I, See, uh, hopefully you're not following this. I'm not following it. We were, me and Steven both were super confused. Uh, next day, September 24th, Steven tells me Garrett is still in and going to call me, um, but I never got that call. I didn't get a call that day from Steven, uh, or from Garrett, sorry. Um, at this time, my brother was about to get married uh, down in Austin, and I just needed, I needed a t timeout, man. I, I, this, was going, this was going insane. I needed a timeout brother's getting married. I took a couple days off, didn't text Steven, didn't worry about the whole bro five stuff and just went down, had a good time with my family, had a good time with my brother. I just needed a break. Back to it, September 29th. I text Steven about Garrett posting videos with Micah and Matt and how I thought bro five was pretty much done at this point. What it looked like to me was they basically just kicked out Steven and inserted Micah. That's essentially what GM Golf looked like. GM Golf initially was Garrett, Matt, Steven. Steven has issues with Garrett and Matt. So they just booted Steven, insert Micah. Now they're making the same videos. Now that's what it looked like to me. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know what else to really call it though. Looking at it and having someone telling me that we're all in on bro five, but literally kind of going against everything that we agreed on from the beginning about like making videos with other people that should be with bro five. Also making a video with someone that was in bro five, but not in bro five anymore. It just was very, very confusing. Um, but Steven reassures me that uh, he is in once Micah leaves and is going to call me again, never got a call from Garrett. Next day I see a comment on Garrett's community page. Uh, Garrett posts something and one of the comments you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at this time, I'm again, I'm putting everything in the bro five. My other channels, I'm still not doing anything with. I'm still all in on bro five. So I'm like a freaking detective trying to figure out everything, reading tweets from Matt and Garrett, uh, looking at comments. I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on because all I have is Steven. That's it. So I'm trying to get as much information as possible 
So I know what the heck is going on. Am I getting played? Am I getting screwed? What is going on? So I see a post on Garrett's community post on YouTube. Someone comments, um, hey, like what the is, is bro five posting today? What's going on? Are you guys posting today? I go and just go back like, I don't know, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later to read some more of the comments. And that comment was done. It was gone. It was deleted. That was a red flag. Again, red flag. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking like, it's Steven and me. Like Garrett is playing us. It's Steven and me. We're in bro five. That's it. Um, Steven tells me that he still thinks Garrett is in, uh, even though he isn't acting like it. So I, I don't know what to take, that, take from that, uh, but that's what he texts me. Um, eventually though, that same day, we keep texting and eventually I think Garrett starts kind of, or um, Steven starts kind of seeing all the things that I was seeing. And we eventually both agree that Garrett and Matt are out. They're no longer in bro five. Matt officially called and said he was out. Garrett essentially just quietly without making any sort of disturbance or arguments or anything. He quietly was just like, I'm not going to do anything with bro five anymore. Um, and so we both agreed it's me and him. Um, and at this point, like it's pretty weird. It's pretty like what the heck is going on, especially for Steven because Steven only has bro five. Let me go back to that again. Steven only has bro five. He has nothing else, right? Um, so September 30th, I think that, yeah, next day, I jump on a call with Steven and uh, tell him, hey man, let's, we'll figure this out, bro. If you wanna move down here to Dallas, if you wanna, if you need a place to crash for a bit while you try to find a place, um, it can just be the two of us. We can make videos together uh, and we can start looking for other guys that maybe we add in and, you know, add back the pieces to bro five with some other people as well. But I was like, don't worry, dude, we'll make it happen. We'll make it work. Um, and we both agreed it was okay, cool. We're going to do it. October 2nd, Steven tells me he's going to start his own YouTube channel. Now I was all about it. I was like, dude, this is great. It was awesome. Since it's just me and you. And if you're, if you're, if you actually are going to move down here to Dallas, we can film videos together. And then if you want to go off and do a soccer tutorial for your channel, or you want to go off and do some uh, soccer golf video or whatever, that's great. If you want some like individual, at this point, like the whole bro five dream of what we had set up to be, because initially we were like modeling it after Dude Perfect, after like Team Edge or some of these other groups. Um, I'm trying to think some other, uh, there's, I'm blanking, but you know, some of the other groups that all they have is the group channel and that's it. Um, but at this moment, I'm like, all right, let's just switch. Let's just turn this into like a sideman. You know, this is like a collab channel and we have our individual channels. That's fine. Let's make it work. October 4th, we text back and forth a couple days. I'm kind of sick. Um, and I'm letting him know, hey, like, I I'm not feeling good. Uh, but I'm going to still upload a video for Bro5. We're all good. Um, and he's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's the last time I've, I've got a text from Steven. I mean, there's some other stuff. Uh, you know, the last text was asking about the FanDuel money, which has been sent out to them and everyone, they've got their money for doing that. Um, but that was like the last individual text between me and him. Um, and then later, I'm not sure exactly when, uh, but a couple days later, the next day, uh, a week later, I'm not sure, but Steven, Matt and Garrett were back to filming videos again just like at the very beginning, GM Golf. Um, I don't know if Micah was in those videos or not. He might have been. Um, but at this point, this is when I officially knew that like Bro5 was over. Uh, and and it sucked, man. It, it really did suck a lot because I I really had a lot of really fun times, a lot of good memories. Um, I mean, it was so fun filming videos and, and doing like that stretch, even though it was crazy, it was still so much fun. And I really thought bro five was something that could be really awesome. Like we could make some really, really awesome videos, travel the world, play sick golf courses, start branching out doing Frisbee videos, soccer videos, football videos, whatever, doing fun collabs. Like I was so stoked for the future. And I, I put everything, I, and I, I honestly, I, I, I swear to you guys, I put everything into Bro5. I really did. Um, 
it was my number one priority. It was the only thing I was focusing on. Uh, I was doing everything I could to, to make the videos great, to come up with new ideas, to set up new collabs, um, to find new brand deals so we could do bigger and better things. Um, and yeah, it sucks, man. It really does. It sucks. Um, and this is the last thing I said. I said it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to, um, but that happens in, in life sometimes. Um, I'm going to try to use this as a learning experience. I feel like there was a lot of things I did wrong in the whole situation. Um, and so if anything like this happens in the future or whatever, I can, I can kind of go back on those uh, mistakes I made or even like some of the red flags I saw and, and try to handle some of the situations differently. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe it would have been a different outcome. Um, but yeah, we had me personally, I won't speak for them, but me personally, I had, I, I still have a lot of good memories, man. Like being out on the, that boat fishing really for the first time, catching that bass, um, doing, doing like the crazy, uh, this thing, whatever that was doing, you know, coming up with that, that rap on the spot and, uh, God, I mean, there were just so many things. Filming with Greg Norman. I mean, there's just so many things. So um, a lot of good memories, but unfortunately, like the last month or so has been pretty terrible for me. Um, but it is what it is, man. And and that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I don't know if you were able to make it through all this, um, but I'm, I'm hoping uh, that I answered all your questions. I know there's been tons of questions. So I'm really hoping that this answers most of them, if not all of them. And I'm hoping we can all move on because I'm ready to move on. I'm gonna post these last couple videos on Pinehurst and then I'm moving on. Like I'm, I'm really over this whole situation. I just wanna move on. And I really hope everyone else can do the same. And just, this is the last video and just drop it here. Like finish it here and that's it. Um, if you wanna keep watching me do videos, awesome. If you wanna keep watching those guys do videos, great. Whatever you want to do is fine. The only thing that I ask is like, just be respectful. Whatever side you're on, it doesn't really matter. I just want everyone to be respectful. Don't go over there and write comments. Don't go to my channel and write comments. Like, let's just be respectful about the situation. It didn't work out. It sucked. Uh, a lot of things, again, like you could probably make a movie about this whole situation um, because it is that wild, but I hope that's it, man. I hope that's the end. And uh, man, longest, longest video, no cuts, no edits. That is a wrap. And hopefully, um, if you really did care about this situation, I hope that you actually watched the whole video and you didn't skim through anything. Um, and, and again, make these assumptions or come up with your own conclusions or whatever it may be. I laid it all out on the line. That's what went down, man, bro five. Um, so, that's it. Bro5 is over. A couple more videos are going to be posted on this channel, guys. If you want to watch them, fine. If you don't want to watch them, that's fine too. Um, but that's it. Hopefully, uh, moving from here, we can leave this all in the past and uh, everyone can move forward and move on with their lives. So that's it, guys. All right. Bye.